And I would now like to introduce our speaker, Lisa Krzywiski. Close, Krzywiski. Oh, I thought I really had it down. <laughs> All right, I apologize. That's okay. Um, Lisa's the director of the Municipal Data Bank Local Aid Section of the Division of Local Services. She's going to walk us through that website. I don't know if you've ever used that website. Um, it has a ton of information. When she walks you through it, you're going to keep. You're going to say throughout the whole presentation, I can't believe I had access to that. So, Lisa, show them this exciting website. Exciting, exciting, exciting. <clears throat> First of all, can everybody hear me? Okay. Oh, it got really dark. Are you taking questions also? Yes, I will. If you have a question as I'm doing something on the site, just shout out my name because I tend to get in my head and don't see people put their hand up. So just call my name out and I'll stop and answer your question right away so that you don't forget or I don't forget to get back to you. Lisa, is that okay? Yeah, no, that's fine for me. So I don't know if anybody here knows me. Sue, I'd like to congratulate you on signing the 351st Compact Agreement. Somebody had to be last. I was there to witness it, so congratulations on that. Um, the Community Compact Program is out there to help you all, but in addition to that, my division is here to help you all the time. 24, well, not 24-7, but you can email me 24-7. Um, I've been with the division for 34 years. It, It'll be 35 years in September. I know I still look like I'm 18, haven't <laughs> aged a bit. Um, I started, I was still wearing diapers. Um, and I plan to be there for at least the next seven and a half. I started there, I wanna finish there. I've had two jobs in my life. One was babysitting and the other was doing the, the work of the Division of Local Services. When I started, I just did cherry sheets, which I know you all know what they are, and you're all sitting there anxiously waiting for us to send out another alert with an update as to those numbers are. Um, about 18 years ago, I don't even actually know the exact date that it occurred, I was offered to the position of combining local aid with the data bank. Um, I think it's because Rick Kingsley had a weak moment and decided that he didn't want to interview any more people and just said move over there and do both. Uh, since then, two huge things have happened. Technology for the state, which is not always the best, I'll admit it, our systems aren't always the greatest, but for us, things really took off. Um, and I worked really hard to convert what we were doing, which was very static, into something that was live. So. When I started, we had thousands of spreadsheets up there that people didn't even know they had, they had access to, but they were there. And cities and towns were paying companies to download the spreadsheet from our website, put it together in a little booklet, and sell it to you for $1,000. Every time one of you guys walked by me at the MMA annual meeting and I caught your eye and called you over, I would direct you not to do that. To come and see me or call me, and we could walk you through doing it. Since the, in the last three years, we have changed from static to live. So I know you all hear the word DLS gateway application, doing your tax rate and everything. All that information that you're required to file with us is in our database. And I'm now creating reports that are live on our website that the minute you set your tax rate, your data is there. It's live on our website. And that's part of what I'm gonna show you today. But the other really big thing that's happened to us, and it just happened, is Mass.gov <coughs> excuse me, decided to change its entire authoring software. So how many of you actually use our website now? How many of you hate me now because of the way it looks? <laughs> thanks, thanks for your honesty, Denise. I mean, I agree with you. It's not the best model for our constituent base. The Mass.gov in total was designed to just dedicate the services to a taxpayer. So if you were in your taxpayer role of wanting to renew your license, you can probably get there easily. If you want to pay your income taxes, you can probably get there easy. But if you're a local official and you want to find out how many communities in the Commonwealth have a split tax rate, it's not that easy. We We've been, it was very hard for us to get pigeonholed into what they're looking for. So it looks pretty. 
but not as functional as it was before. When you used to go to our site, everything was right there front and center, and we just can't do that anymore. I also caution you against bookmarking specific pages because every day we are coming up with ideas to make to tweak it, <clears throat> to go in the back door and make it better for, for our constituent base. We are totally listening to the complaints that we hear about it and trying to improve on it where we can. If you don't, <clears throat> excuse me, if you don't know what our website is, it's www.mass.gov slash D as in dog, L as in Lisa, S as in Sam. And if you've ever called me on the phone, I will say it exactly the same way a thousand times a day. That's the best way to get to our website. Don't go through mass.gov and look for local services. Don't go through the DOR website and look for local services. Just bookmark that, our homepage. We have owned that homepage for 20 years. They can't take it away from us. We bought it years ago when they didn't make us continue to pay fees on things. If you do that, it'll bring you to this page right here. Um, I encourage you to use that tell us what you think but when you use it don't ask for help just tell them really what you think about the site because they're using that feedback to improve the give us more tools to improve it for you folks um, I'm gonna just scroll down to the main part which is the more important part So in the past, we always had Bureau of Accounts, Bureau of Local Assessment, the Data Bank, and then some other incidental things that throw out the page. They don't want us to do Bureau-based boxes. They want us to do function-based boxes. Our Bureaus are the functions, so I just took the Bureau words off. So if you look now, if you're looking for legal guidance, it's under the Municipal Finance Legal Guidance box. If you're looking for as an assessor information about filling out assessing documents none of this is data this is all process and documents you go to the property assessment if you're looking for guidance on the rules for accounting you go to accounting um, I know there's a couple of times I heard the names you've used the service our technical assistance bureau if you're looking to get some assistance from one of our consultants to come out and do a review in the community give you some recommendations on improvements of municipal finance um, go to our municipal finance assistance section the publications are all the documents that people want to see the the um, municipal calendar the glossary of finance terms all those are in there DLS training programs is going to be a really huge one not for you guys but for a very important team in your your finance team the assessors are soon going to be able to get recertified to classify land um, online instead of having to pay and send them to a five-day course in another region of the state you're gonna they're gonna be able to sign up online and, and complete the course on their time with you know it's all broken out in modules it should be released in the next probably tops a week um, and then down to what, except for this last box, because DLS doesn't consider anything a, not, anything a public request because all of our data is public. So there is no formal public request, but they require that. So we ignore that box completely, actually. Um, the two main ones for me are the DLS Gateway application because that's how I get my information. So as a local official, you'd go into the, the application, fill out the forms that you're required to fill out. And then I like to, because I'm the only one here, my boss didn't come, so I can say that my section is the best section. Um, I also like to say that I have the best job in state government because even when they cut the budget, I'm still sending money out because I distribute your monthly local aid. That's why I stayed around. So I'm going <coughs> to, excuse me, go into the municipal data bank. And again, all of this is required space to be taken. You know, the idea in my mind of a website is put stuff up front where people can see it, but they've made it so that you have to have all this stuff in the way. So whenever you come to any of our pages, always know that 
you got to go below the fold to get to where the substantive stuff is in our website. Um, at the MMA annual conference, we released what we call the Municipal Finance Trend Dashboard. It was probably a, almost two years <coughs> in the making. Um, but what it, we've done with this is we've taken all the information that we have, we've put it into a series of groups with charts so you can visually look at what a set, data set is for your community. So to get into that, you're just going to click on the link. All the boxes, the words in the box are actually links. I'm not going to show it, but on your own time, please feel free to review the commissioner's video on the Municipal Trend Dashboard. Our commissioner likes to do videos for us, so. I'm not going to go through each and every dashboard item, but um, I'm going to show you a couple so that you can see. And if you have questions on why we didn't include something, ask, because maybe, very simply, we didn't think of including it in a category. Obviously, this looks better on your desktop with a regular computer, regular monitor. But what it's done is, I have to be careful and pick a town. that I think will give me the data I want to see. <coughs> so if you look at the first panel, and there's several panels that do different things, but the first panel is showing you visually your trends in free cash. Does everybody know what free cash is? Yeah, we don't have enough of it. But <laughs> how, how did you get to those charts? I'm trying to follow you. I'm sorry. Yell at me to slow down, I'm too fast. No, no, which link? Um, so in you're in the data bank, no, back up, go back to where you had the box gateway and municipal data bank. So I'm on your home page. Okay, so the, scroll the down. The gateway application? <clears throat> no. Okay. Sorry, I have to move. <laughs> You're welcome. <coughs> There's another question. Sure. Is there a way One to second. correct data that's, that has been given to you off the recap sheet that's incorrect for past years? That is, that can't be. If you have a tax rate that was certified, then that is the correct data. Even if you, there was mistakes, the tax rate was certified using that data. So that was, would be non- like four or five years that were we weren't audited, and the figures for uh, stabilization and free cash Sta was incorrect. Stabilization and free cash are not part of the tax recap. Free cash is certified by the director of accounts. No. So what was certified as free cash is what you were given as available funds. If you had an audit that showed you should have had more or less free cash, the only way that could have been changed, and it would have had to been changed then, is to do an update to free cash. So the data that is presented in our data bank is correct based on what was certified under the director of accounts. Back in the back of the room, you had a question? Are you using Safari? It, yeah, I know it does work in Safari because I've used it on my cell phone, but Chrome probably works better. Not on a tablet. Um, I have Chrome on the tablet. I got J O S J S O N R S fail. Familiar with that one? No, I okay. think that's your side. Well, we can deal with that. Because obviously it's working. <laughs> Sometimes it's permissions that you have on your Safari or your your own personal computer that causes a problem. So this shows a trend in free cash. Um, we do try to caution non-local officials when they look at this data because you know it, we get calls from the local officials and say we were on your website and we saw that their free cash went from you know nearly a little bit over three million down to just below two million what are they doing wrong 
well, maybe they cut your tax bill because they took some of that certified free cash to lower the tax rate, you know. Um, so we do make every effort not to let local townspeople make bad judgments and say that the town government is, you know, bank robbers and all that stuff. Um, but people do make their own opinions and we can't always control that. But what this panel gives you, if you see the little question mark and you hover over it, gives you some guidance as to what we, what the pro, what, what the data element is, where it came from, and in some places we'll say, like if you look at the last paragraph, last sentence of the first paragraph, it's an increasing free crap free cash trend is generally favorable. So we, we do highlight that, but we don't have any hard recommendation. We, I think we say 5% of your budget is a good free cash number, but 5% of your budget sometimes doesn't work for another community. So you, um, there's no, no, penal, no penalty if you don't do what we kind of have as a general recommendation. Um, but that group, the technical assistance group, they help with that stuff. Go ahead. Do you mean 5% of your annual budget or like 5% reserves? We say that your reserves, free cash stabilization and overlay should be 5% of, this is a quirky word. We say total budget, it's the total amount to be raised off the recap. So we're not looking at those other funds that are not part of the recap process. So it isn't really a true total budget number because we don't have that. And that's a recommendation. That's not, well, we're not going to yell at you if you don't. The yeah, they, they use pretty much the same guide. So they want 10%. They want 10%? Oh, is that S&P or Moody's or both? Both. Both. They didn't tell us that. <laughs> They're being mean to you. No, I'm kidding. Um, and this, this particular report is, what, what do we call this one? This is, <clears throat> this is a lot of what Moody's and S&P will pull together when they're looking at your operating position, where you're sitting. So we pull together the items that they would generally look at. So we've got your enterprise fund free cash if you have an enterprise fund. So any of the retained earnings you have in your enterprise. Um, we look at some of those numbers as a percent of budget. The stabilization fund, and to answer the second part of your question, you said stabilization fund was wrong. If you have audited documents, then your town accountant can come to us and adjust the Schedule A, because the Schedule A is not a certified document. Anything well, that's certified... It wasn't but they were audited for four or five years, mm -hmm. and the figures that, they, that are on there are the ones that were submitted, per se, for verification. And then when we did have an audit, it showed different numbers for, for those past years and what's up on the site. Okay, so the audit wouldn't calculate free cash. It would, it would be a balance sheet that would be included in the audit. But stabilization fund balance may differ in an audit from our stabilization fund and part of that is because of I'm not an accountant so who somebody here said they're an accountant help me out gap accounting versus some other type of accounting versus actual cash versus accrual you know. right so there may be differences in how the audit firm accounts for especially with stabilization fund it may have maybe just all general fund stabilization fund. It may have enterprise stabilization or something to that effect. Up until you asked me that question, I actually sounded like I knew what I was talking about. Then you had to trick me. Um, another thing that we're, we're looking at a lot in this and we're doing more work on it is um, the uncollected tax revenues. So this is something that your treasurer, collector, and your accountant are supposed to agree on, that this is how much is left to be paid in outstanding property taxes and um, personal and real, um, items that are in tax foreclosure or they're ta in tax title. So this is showing that um, this particular community has a fair amount of outstanding taxes this year. It's really not that big of a number because it's only up in the 800,000. 
Sorry, I know you're in the room. <laughs> so, but this is this is a year-end document. <laughs> Did you used to work with Lauren? No, you never met with her. Okay. Um, we've also started taking information off of the audits. We've never collected audit data. We've always collected the documents for for the 173 odd communities that are supposed to file an audit, but we've never used the data. We we get it in in a PDF and it sits in a file cabinet. We're now pulling certain things off, like the unassigned fund balance, so that we can look at that because it's reported a little bit different and a little bit clearer than it is on Schedule A. So we've got a lot of new data on that's included in this, um, and then of course the and I apologize if anyone in the room is still self-insured, but the dreaded issue of self-insured self health trust funds. Um, more and more we're seeing communities, and if you're one of them, you know that the trust fund suddenly grows a very fast deficit. And we're really recommending that people are not in self-insured trust funds. Um, luckily, the one that I'm looking at is not, but if you were in a trust fund, it would show how the revenues and expenditures have been the revenue is not growing so much, but the expenditure is going up, um, and, and what the balance is in that trust fund. So this is like how I should always talk in the dark. <laughs> Sorry, is that okay? It, it's fine by me. I actually can't see anything anyways because my glasses are dirty and my husband didn't clean them today. A little louder, sure. Sure. If the people that did this great senior center had a microphone. <laughs> so that's just one sample of what the municipal trend dashboard has. There are several different groups. Um, I'm not going to show you OPEB, even though I know it's like the hot topic item out there because we're still cleaning data. We worked with PERAC to get data. They collect their data in a very different way from the way we do, so we're still kind of gleaning it up and, and trying to make it um, send a better, give a better image of what, what's happening out there with that. But one of the ones that I really do like, and at this time of the year it gets asked, uh, not sorry, not this time of the year, in the fall I get asked for this information a lot, is what's happening on the property tax level. So, you know, what's my average single family tax bill versus the communities in my, neighbor, in, in my area or communities that are like mine? Um, so, and this I'm going to show you a little bit more information than I did on the last dashboard. Again, the question mark is there to help you identify what this source is. But if you go down and you're looking at the average single family tax bill chart here, and this is just Abington. And you see, that's kind of normal, right? The tax, the average tax bill would just kind of ratchet up a little bit. If you click down here, this button that says click here for 351 report, this will actually give you the data for all the communities. All the communities except for those of you that grant a residential exemption. How and I you get to this page? Go back to, go off the chart, go back to the, where the list of categories are. And this was the under property tax. Okay, so it should look like that. Category three dashboard. Yeah, there's two categories. Yep. Okay. Category yep. three. We we had to split them. Well, we thought we were outsmarting an issue with the software that we use, but we're not. So property not. taxation. Yep. If you look at the one that says category three dashboard, the first one. Right. That's what one I'm in. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I see these coming up very quickly. The other night, I tried getting off to some of these, and the loading of this, instead of showing you the bar graphs, it was basically showing you nothing. It was very slow. Is there times when it's, it's very busy? I don't think it's because there's time. I think it's times when your internet is, is busy. Um, there are times during the day when Gateway is very busy, and we're doing a lot of hitting on the website that our our office network internet is very slow and I think that affects the the performance of the chart 
Um, one thing I will recommend on these, Chrome is better than, than IE unless you're using IE Edge. That seems to work pretty fast. That's what I have. I have both at home and Edge works pretty fast. But Chrome definitely loads faster than, than IE does. Um, and it, you know, it depends on the broadband you have in your home, the broadband in your office, the, the, the town you're located in. This is a very graphic intensive report, but that isn't what is actually taking up the memory of it running. There's a lot of calculations going on in the background that'll slow it down. But it, if, it, if it didn't load, I would close the browser and then reopen it and see if that helps it. Sometimes you also may need to clear your cache I'm not sure if you know how to do that, but um, if you clear the, the browsing memory in your browser, sometimes you get a lot of pages built up in there and it'll slow everything down. So what I was showing you, yep. Is it possible to get the data in a different format, either on a line graph or in, a, in a, just a numbers? Not yet. Not yet. I'm, I'm going to, we, the software that we're using is called Logi Analytics. It's a report writing software that allows us to connect to our database and do lots of things. We have um, three people that have been trained on how to use it, and we had a total of 28 hours of training, and then we waited six months before the software was put on our computers. So then we've been doing help desk calls since then. There's no one else in DOR that is using this software. So we're really good at the first part, which is writing queries to do this thing. Now it's building that into the software. So I think that that line chart, the different types of charts um, are coming. I also think one of the things that will be the next phase of the dashboard is for you to be able to ch check how you want to plot the data. So you want this average single family tax bill and you want it to be this type of chart and you can select that. So that's what we're working to, and another phase of it that we're working to do is you be able to create, um, and I know this is great for, you, for this group because you like to have a, a little booklet, a little handout to do, where you'll be able to push a button, print out this nice three or four page report, columns formatted, little charts, lots of text, and hand that to your out of town meeting or whatever, whatever you want to do with it. So um, those are things that there, I have a meeting with my senior deputy commissioner next week. Those are my goals and initiatives for next year. Um, and I think that we'll be able to do that. So what this report does, when you click on the 351 report, it gives you the ability to pull out all the data that's, that's in there for the average single family tax bill. And if you look at it, you'll see this is kind of, it's really hard to see it here, but if you're looking at it on your laptop, you'll see where the word table is kind of highlighted. Next to it, it says graphs and state totals. If you kind of look right, I'm too short too. See the word table up there in the corner above please select a municipality? You can't see it on the screen because it's not bright enough, but next to it, it says graph and state totals. So if you want to see what your average single family tax bill was to the state average single family tax bill, you could click on that state totals and see what it's been. So for this, for 2018, the average statewide was 5,831. So you could see where you were in relation to that. Yes. Where's this page now? You said 351? Yep. Now, I know we, we in the data bank, the, the whole four of us, know that this is really sometimes very difficult to maneuver around there. So grab your pens and write down this number. This is a number where you can get every single person that works in the data bank, all four of us. 
617-626-2384. That is a share line, so everyone that's in the office will pick up that line. If you call that line and you're getting no help, change the last two digits to 86 and yell at me. And say you're not getting what you need from this, and I'm happy to help. Um, it, it, these reports are they're very simple to use but until you get into using them or you have no apprehension about using them they feel very overwhelming but they're actually very simple to work with yes sir. back to the prior page where you had the list of communities can you can you do a, a shift click to kind of pick no up? no the, that is maybe version three um, so right now it's a single community report at some point in time, we do want to create a report that will allow you to select, uh, either select the communities or select them based on similar operating budgets, uh, you know, maybe five, and have bar charts beside each other so you see where you are in relation to them. Okay, and then the final question is, I see you can do a PDF export. Is there an Excel opportunity for export yet? Not for the, for the charts, no, because it's useless. It's not... If you export it to Excel, it's a picture. Mm -hmm. So that's why we just did PDF on that. Um, if you want the data though, if I go back here to the, the data that I was showing you, you can export this table right out to Excel and do more things, less things, um, whatever you want. And um, you know, some people like to, to do skip like do every four years or something in a chart and you can do that you can also do that in here if you wanted to pare down your your grouping if you only wanted to have four years of data but you didn't want every year you could do 18 15 12 8 and 4 and hit the submit button and it's going to pull out just that group of years. And then if you said, well, I really don't want every city and town. I just want two of them. You can pick Amherst and Asheville and hit submit. And that will give you just those communities you asked for and just those years that you asked for. So you can bring it down to the size you want it to if you don't really want all cities and towns or all years. Thank you. It, I'm not going to go through all the reports because they all kind of work the same way <clears throat> as do the, the dashboards. Um, this, we have a bug in one of our dashboards so I need to look before I show you a, an option that's there. So as I said this has a bunch of data on it um, but it's hard to see it all on the screen. If you print the dashboard, small monitor, keeping my fingers crossed that it works, it'll create a PDF file that has all the charts nicely formatted. Unfortunately, we have two charts that won't do it because of a software issue that we're working through but eventually they'll all be able to do this and um, you could just print this out and go sit at the the FinCon meeting and say show it to everybody this is what we've got off the DOR website um, There's another one that I wanted to show you because it's something we've just built into it. For these charts, some of these charts you can see have stacked. They have multiple items on there. And if you hover over it, you can see the amount. If you really don't want to know what the tax levy is, you can actually, maybe not on this one, sorry. Um, never mind, I wasn't saying any of that. <laughs> but if you, 
If you click the PDF export, rather than doing it on the dashboard level, I'm doing this on this panel level. And what you'll see is another nice report that you can hand out. It shows the chart, but because it gets really busy in the chart if we put labels on the, each of the um, colors, we have a table below it that shows you all the data that's actually included in that. And let me make that a little bigger so you can actually see the data. So see how it's showing you what the tax levy is for each of those years that corresponds with the blue shading on the bar chart. So another nice report that you can hand out to your, to whoever. Oh. In the age when everyone puts on the bottom of their email, save a tree, don't print this out. Here I am telling you print this, print that. So that's like, that's the big thing that we've done on our website this year. There's more to come. Uh, we love your feedback on it, except don't send your feedback here. <laughs> this feedback on the bottom of every page goes to mass.gov. <clears throat> and it's great to, to put feedback, especially if you say, I don't like what you've done with this. I can't find things. That's great. But if you say, I can't find this and I need help, and you don't put contact information, when I see the feedback for our pages, I can't reach out to you and help you. If, you. if you do use this and you want help and you can't remember where you put my number when I was here, put your email address in there. I look at the feedback every single day and try to glean from it what I need to fix or say, oh, well, I can actually help you. You're just in the wrong place and I can send you a link to where it is. So if, they, if you're gonna put a complaint and say I need help, it's great. Just put your name, when your your telephone number, your email address, the, your name, and the town you're in. I can find you through the directory, which is a segue to something that I'm always told I have to tell people when we go out there. This does not fall on you, but I'm encouraging you to tell people in the town government that this needs to happen. We have on our website on our DLS Gateway application what's called the Local Officials Directory. This is a directory of every elected or appointed local official in the, the town. All of our communication goes out to people electronically, either through a DLS alert or if, you, if your tax rate gets approved and we hit the approve button, it looks at the directory and sends it out to who we think is the mayor, the town manager, the accountant, the auditor, whoever is listed in there. If your clerk or your MI, your IT guy is not keeping that current, you're missing communication from us. So it's something you really want to kind of double check in with the town on occasion. Has anyone updated the, the LOD since the last election so that it's current? Um, Where is that on your site? It's on the DLS gateway. The town, account, the town clerk is given responsibility for doing it. Um, and I hear the, chuck, the slight chuckles. Yes, I talk to them on the phone too sometimes. It's not easy. Uh, a lot of the clerks are still have, have not started using the computers yet. They still just use Votamode or whatever that was called. So if you have an, MI, uh, an IT person or you know, the accountant is very, very good at the directory, somebody just needs to update it or else we're sending stuff out to people that don't work in the town anymore. You want to make sure? What's your phone? It's called the, it's called, we call it the LOD. LOD. It stands for Local Officials Directory. Okay. And it's way better than the MMA directory because it's not made of paper. And how do you find it on your site? The directory, you don't find it on our site. It's in the DLS Gateway application. Wow. It is actually on our site, but not the same way. You have to go to Gateway to see it. I will show that to you in a minute. Oh, okay. Um, so that, that is like the biggest part of our website. We've made some other changes that I really wanted to get out to folks because when I read the feedback, um, and I don't want to offend anyone here, but the famous comment that, I see, comment that I see in the feedback is, I used to be able to find all the IGRs. Your new website sucks. So I'm trying to ruin that image and, and say that make people stop saying that. 
because I can't tell Kathleen Caleri that she'd kill me. So I'm going to go back to our home page. You don't need to follow along with this, um, but it's for you to use that at your home base. I need to walk away from it. It's following me. Okay, so like everything in the world, today we have a chargeback for storing all of the IGRs bulletins on our website. So we had to make a decision where we're going to keep all these out there or get them into the, the DLS gateway application and have people search through there, which we've got ways of doing it without you having to log in. So if you were to go to our DLS gateway application box, And then just because clicking once isn't enough, go to our login on the second page that comes up. This looks slightly different when it's not connected to a projector. This middle box is actually side by side. For some reason on a projector, it goes up and down. But if you look right here, can you see where I'm, my finger is pointing? This allows you to search in Gateway without logging into Gateway for IGRs and bulletins and what is soon to be released called L I knew it. LFOs, Local Finance Opinions. They're a new thing that we're going to be issuing um, instead of written opinions on certain topics, they're going to be issued as an LFO with no specific information but the answer to the, the, the opinion that we we're asked, so it's generic to all, um, instead of having a case or a person's name on it. Um, and I will admit, I find this, I, my, I myself have ripped my name off, I myself have found this search very complicated. I am fortunate enough that my office is right next to the DLS law section. So I walk out of my door, I walk down two doors, I walk into Kathleen Caleri's office and ask her the question, because I can, could never find things. Today I actually had some time before coming over here, I was working out of our Springfield office, and I played around with it, and I have a little bit better comfort level with it. Um, the handout is, is good, but if you don't know what you're looking at, it's very complicated. And that's where I, what I've had been running into. So I spent a couple of minutes doing it and figured out where I was going wrong. So you get to the law library search through the gateway application. That's pretty straightforward. Um, what you're looking for is where it gets tricky. Like how to do it. If you're a lawyer, you probably know the statute and you're going to find it like that. I am not a lawyer. I have, you've all seen our bulletin 29, 30, whatever number we're up to these days. Kathleen Caleri, who's our chief counsel, op you ask her a question, she opens the book right to the exact law. I've done that once and it was, I think, because I had a pen stuck in there. <laughs> So I don't know the different statutes. If you say to me, what's CPA? I say chapter 44, and I know there's a letter, but I can't remember what it is. So the statute search is out for me. So I figured it out today. The best place for me to go is there's two good places. If I know what the product is, which it took me a while to figure out what they meant by product. If I know what the product is, like an IGR, a bulletin or what will new the new one that will be coming out which we haven't issued any yet or LFOs so if I know it's an IGR and I know it was issued in 2016 that is enough information for me to get close enough to be able to figure out what I'm looking for so if right here under product number I type IGR 
dash 2016. And does everybody here know what a wildcard is in searches? No? Okay. It's simple. It's a percent sign in our case. Sometimes it's an asterisk for certain things, but for this search, it's a percent sign. So if I put a percent sign here, and I go down to search, I am actually going to get information, which I never got before today. So I feel pretty good about this. So if you know that, we'll pick on the cable guy, um, that it was the IGR cable television, you can see it right there, the second item on the list. And you can go to open, and you'll see the summary of the IGR. And if you want to download it to have it on your computer because you need to reference it frequently, you can click under this document. And you'll notice that a PDF opened at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. You can click on that and you'll have your IGR right there as it was issued. Um, right now, you can get from 16 to the present time. They're going through. They don't want to put all the IGRs that, like, every year we issue the annual tax mailing IGR. Not necessary to have access to 20 years of the tax billing ones. The last two years are the most relevant, so that's what we're going to have up there. So they're adding that information in there. This is a continually growing beast, basically. Um, where you're going to be able to find every IGR bulletin and when we issue them, LFO is out there. Uh, I don't want to send it to DLS Law for help, so now that I've kind of figured it out a little bit more and I can play with it, if you are trying to search for something and you can't find it, you can call the 86 number. I will answer it and, and try to get it for you. And like I said, I sit two doors away from Kathleen, so when I can't figure it out, I walk in and she tells me the IGR number and I come back and I tell you what it is. <laughs> it's how I've been successful. I may not know all the answers off the top of my head, but I get them. Um, so How does everyone feel about the, the search? you feel like you could give it a try? Anything in there that you think we're missing as far as search stuff? No? Yes? I think, I can't see it all that well, but um, I think under the search bar, yep. there should be something that says, for better results, use, use the wildcard character. Or something. I think it actually does. Does it say that? I think it does. I, so, um, It might, it might, it says it in here. I think that's what it is. It's in this handout that we have. Um, I was going to go over a couple of the search, other search things in the keyword and summary, which I think might be more relevant. Because most of the time I don't remember, did we issue an IGR or did we issue a bulletin? Um, if you use the keyword field right here, if you use that keyword field that's there, and you use expressions like, if you wanted to know everything that we issued related to, I can't see, property tax. If you typed it just like property tax, it's only going to look for property tax. It essentially puts quotes around those two words and will only pull out property tax. If you say property and tax, it'll pull out everything that says the word property or property with an apostrophe S or tax, taxes, taxation. As long as it sees those three letters and anything after it, it'll pull that out. And if you, property tax isn't a good example, but if you use the word or, it'll search anytime it sees property or tax it'll pull that out. Um, so sometimes you're looking for exemption or abatement. So if you use those two expressions, it'll pull it out and you use the or in brackets. Um, and every time you do the search, 
it tells you how many records it found. So in this case, it found seven, so they're all fitting on one screen. But if it found 100, you could change this show to a higher number and they would all be listed on the screen and you could scroll down and look at them. Also, if you're not sure, did I really want this cable television, but I can't read what the rest of it says, if you hover over the three dots, it'll read out what the rest of that title is. The same with the summary. And then if you wanted to sort, um, there's arrows here, so it would sort that list alphabetically. It's not a good field to sort it on, it's more of a date field, but these are all issued just recently on the same date. So. But if you had two years worth of them and you wanted the most recent at the top, you could sort it over here on the date column, ascending or descending, it would reverse the order and put it all up there in order for you. I suspect um, as time goes on with the searches, we'll probably come up with some different, easier ways to do the searches. This is a first stab at a really cumbersome database of documents. We, our gateway application has been more up to this point, very mathematical. You know, put in some numbers, calculate your shift, put in some numbers, calculate your tax rate, um, that kind of stuff. Now, now we've built a module of it that is all about document management. And so it's gonna take a little bit of time to, to get it perfect. It's way better than it was two years ago. So another year or so I say it would be even more helpful. But what is helpful to us, not your website sucks, but I really wish I could do this. Um, you know, and you can send those kinds of things to the data bank email and I go over them with the bureau chiefs. I am the primary person updating the website as well as managing the data bank. So when I get messages like that, I, you know, I work with the bureau chief to say, people really are having a hard time finding, you know, the, the most recent equalized valuation documents. So let's see if we can figure this out to make it better. Yes. yes. The, the tax impact, impact uh, uh, calculator, it took me a while to figure out that you could end up doing it online. Previously, you could download that, 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 yep. that and actually do the calculations, uh, multiple cal calculations. Is there, it, it, and I wasn't able to do that per se. It, what it did, it, it calculated online. I could download what I just found out to an Excel sheet. Are they going to end up giving us the, the capability of doing that calculation again? Like, like so, previously? so I want to clarify yeah. the tax calculator that you're using. Are you talking about the shift? Are you talking about um, where did you get to it? I guess is the question. Uh, I don't know. I can't find anything on your site. <laughs> <laughs> no, no I, I, found, I found it. It's the, the property tax impact calculator. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that's in the di uh, that's in the da, 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 financial tools. Yes. And you're talking about financial tools and calculators here. Yes. And the, the dirt service works because you can actually pull that out and make an Excel sheet and change the numbers right on your own computer. Right, that is an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. That the, the, it, the tax impact, if you call that up, yep. I can only make the calculation online for my community and then download it to an Excel. I couldn't change it once it was an Excel. I could only change. Right, okay. I, so I said a few minutes ago, I have a huge staff of the four of us. Yeah. Um, to, to keep maintaining static spreadsheets that do calculations takes a lot of time. This tax impact calculator is actually, when you select your community, it is pulling your data in and calculating what it would be. Right. So it's not designed to be interactive outside of this environment. Okay. So, I mean, you could, 
you could download this and go back to it and do another version of it. You know, you can hit it as many times as you want with different numbers. Yeah. But it doesn't look like it here, but it means pulling all kinds of information from different places. And that would be great, except that in the fall when all the tax rates are being set, you know, in September I'd run it, I'd have a dozen or so. I'd have to rerun it in October. And then once you hit November, I'd have to run it every day because so much data would be updated. And you could say, well, they can wait a couple of weeks, but you ever talk to a local official who wants something now? Yeah. Yeah, I get those calls in November. I want it now. Yeah, so the, the old one, you could download this. Right. This it's speech. just it's just not feasible uh, for our unit to continue to maintain static friendship. In the future, is it going to be, or is it? No, it is never going to be okay. something where we're going to create a static spreadsheet again. Okay, thank you. We may improve upon this and do some work with it in Logi, but at this point, no. Any other questions on stuff? Anything else you're dying to know if we have out there? Would you like to know what the Senate approved? No, I'm kidding, I don't have that. <laughs> did, did the Senate vote today? Do you know? Yeah, okay. I didn't know if John was cussing. He wasn't in the office today. So oh. I, I spent most of my time in the car going to Springfield, so I haven't looked on state government stuff all day. So, let's see. That's a, yeah, none of these things are great. Um, any other thoughts on our website that you'd like to see? Yeah, sure. Can I just have a question? Uh, the DLS training, does that also dip into some of that, like, um, I handed ran a municipal finance 101 kind of class and so forth, and I understood that they got those materials off of the I, DLS website. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen the Hamden 101 finance. Just, yeah, municipal finance 101, I, I think. But I know that they're doing a Citizens Academy out east, and, and my sense was that a lot of those materials are now available on the DLS site. I just wasn't sure if they were doing the training button. No, I don't think we've gotten any training information back from people, but if you have done some sort of program like that, that you... Like the source data was DLS. If they took stuff from us, that that's completely possible, but it wasn't a design class, unless they took our NOF, the new officials finance form. I think it might have come from and, that. And built off of like that. slides or something? Yeah, they probably downloaded that then and, and just ran with it. Was anyone from our office participating? Because I know Terry Williams does stuff out in the West. Um, speaking of NOF, the new officials finance form, someone here is only like day one or something, which is you. Um, did you sign up for our new officials finance form? Um, no, but I'm going to. Okay. It's a, it's a one day. It's at Holy Cross. It's like yeah. five, six hours. Um, but it's actually, it's, a lot of stuff is crammed into it, but it is worth sitting through because even if it's not a responsibility that falls on you, you know who to go ask the question of in your town, why, we, where, is, where are we at with this and stuff. So I definitely recommend that. Um, I think they just extended the registration by a couple of days. So that's coming up in June. Um, yes? Yeah, that's in Worcester again, right? Yeah, Worcester Holy Cross. Yeah. So is there any opportunity to get some training out on the western side of the state? That's a long yeah, it is. I mean, it it's a long ride for me, yeah, coming from Everett. It's a two, two and a half hour ride out, a two and a half hour ride home. So, so we have a um, small group in our, our division who is starting to look at doing some regionalized training um, in addition to, I don't know if any of you participated a few years back, we kind of had like a DLS university that we did. We did, I think, in Ludlow. Um, we used a, I don't know, is there a veterinarian school in Ludlow? No? Grafton. Grafton. I always say the wrong town. We went there and we set up and we did like seven or eight classes over the course of seven to eight weeks to help give local officials who might be looking to go up the ladder in local official world 
um, some training. Well, we're looking to do something more on that, but not for the career ladder so much as just generalized training for different types of local officials, more dedicated to the position. Um, so we're develop developing the criteria and a curriculum for that. It's I don't know if it's making it into the next into fiscal 19's initiatives. It kind of depends on staffing. Um, I don't. I I've mentioned the name a couple of times today. I don't know if any of you folks have ever spoken to Kathleen Clary, the chief counsel for DLS. She is. She is as close to physically retiring as she has ever threatened to be. How's that sound for being evasive? She has, we have posted her position. We're interviewing for her replacement. Hopefully, hopefully we will have a transition period where they're both there. And the only step she hasn't done as of yet is actually gone to the retirement board and submitted her papers. But she has threatened to do it for many years. I almost convinced her to do it during the early retirement incentive we had a few years back. Um, her staying mark was the automation of created and creation of online course 101, which the legal team teaches 10 of the 12 modules, and that is done. So I think the threat is real. She is really going to retire. So we're losing a very valuable. Um, Denise can attest to this very valuable resource in the division it, like I said she knows everything I, I ask her about something that has nothing to do with the legal department and she knows the answer she is the smartest woman that's ever worked in local services so with her leaving I don't know that we're gonna have enough people around to be able to do that for this year but I definitely see it coming out of the division within the next two and I think that would be great for a lot of different positions, and we will be offering that further out. Our problem is our biggest staff is on the Boston line. You know, so for us going out into the western part of the state means we're sending people to Great Barrington and, and Lee and Northampton, and that's a long ride for us. Um, but we're, we're trying. Any other questions about the website or DLS in general that I can help you with? Yes? In your office that we would contact regarding specific factors in cherry sheet line item formulas? That's me. <coughs> okay. What town are you from? Oh, okay, you can call. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I love all 351 of my cities and towns and my 84 regional school districts and my 63 charter school districts. They are, they are my heart and soul. I would answer anybody's question. But if you call, I can guarantee you that you'll say something like, I'm sorry to bother you, and I'll say it's too late. You already are. <laughs> I, I have a strong reputation of being a wise guy on the phone. But if you want to ask now, maybe someone else has the same question and is, doesn't know that they have it. Uh, it, it deals with our Chapter 70 allotment. Yep. And it, it's actually a good thing that you maybe actually should have saved it out. Um, you know, the, the bottom line budget for Chapter 70 went up maybe 3%. Are you talking proposed for 19 or actual for 18? Uh, 18 compared to proposed 19. Okay. Um, you know, I, I understand right now most of the proposals are up like maybe three percent or a little bit better. Um, ours is up higher than three percent. Your most uh, recent one under the Senate version? All the way through from the governor's right through. Okay. So I scratched my head because we haven't really. We don't know what factor would have changed that. Okay, so there's a couple of things. The minimum per pupil aid has gone up from last year. In all three proposals. Um, there has been some holding in the uh, allocating money for students that communities are being penalized for because of the way that the federal government is classifying them as low income. That is a factor. Um, the, there was a change, I'm winging this off the top of my head, but there was an adjustment in the foundation budget that may have affected you. Um, 
So there's a lot of fact, but a lot of communities are seeing an increase. And remember the whole premise of Chapter 70 back in 1994 when the Ed Reform Act passed, this was your base and we ratchet you up unless we have an economic problem where we may go down a little. But the whole idea is that you don't get less Chapter 70 this year than you did last year. Um, or at least at a minimum you get the same. So there, there would be factors. But if you want to call me, I'm in the rest of the week. But don't call me Friday afternoon because I'm not planning on staying all day Friday. <laughs> yeah. But if you want to call me tomorrow, I'm in all day tomorrow. Um, I can take a look at the specific numbers for, right. for you. And if it is something that is out of my area of expertise, I will give you a good contact at the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Um, I have a question. How many of the communities out this way have voted to uh, impose the surcharge on cannabis? Anyone thinking of it? Deadline is coming up. If you think you're going to do it and you want it to be in effect on July 1, I'm not in favor or against. I, I don't support it one way or another. Um, but in order for it to go into effect on July 1st, you need to notify me by May 31st that you voted to accept it or you, you won't be in effect on July 1st. I know in the first year it's not really going to make much difference because I'm not sure there's actually going to be anyone up and operating on July 1st. Um, one of my many pleasurable duties around the division is that whenever something says we need to have someone in DOR talk to someone that has a relationship with cities and towns, I end up on this committee. <coughs> so I am working on the executive steering committee for the implementation of cannabis in the Commonwealth. And I thought my last name was a mouthful. Um, so it's important that if you are considering any of these things that you pay attention to those deadlines. The deadlines work the same as they do for the meals and the room occupancy. It has to be 30 days before the, 30 days prior to the start of the quarter. So if the quarter starts on July 1, we need to know it by the end of May. Um, does anybody have any questions about things like that? Because we do track all that information and we do put it on our website. If you want to know who, I hate our computer. I actually have to log in. Bear with me one second. No, I, I, I'm good. I, I can see it perfect on my screen. I don't need the light. Oh, if they want to see me? Nah, they like me in the dark. It's okay. They saw me while I was drinking water. So we have a whole host of information on the data bank website. If you want to know who else around you is voted to accept um, these local option taxes, we have a report that you can pull up and you can select your neighboring community, actually I'm sorry, this is a one time, it's either all or none. Uh, but you can download this to Excel. Can you all see that thing that looks like a little blue TV? Yes, that is an export button. This report design is going away, it's slowly being replaced by the more flashy one. But if you come across this and you can't figure out how to download the data, just look for the little blue TV. That's because I'm highly technical. I call things little blue TVs. But this will show you all the communities that have adopted at the meals, the rooms, or the marijuana. And I've actually been working with someone at MMA a lot to kind of see what communities are doing and trying to map it out. It's something that changes on a, some days on an hourly basis. Um, we've got about 40 communities that have adopted the local option. We have a couple of those, at least two I know of, have adopted the local option and have a ban on the sale of marijuana. So I'm not really sure how much money they're going to get from a local option tax. But I, I think that, and I'm sure that all of you agree, there's a lot of confusion out there about the implementation of cannabis, what it means to the town, what it doesn't mean. 
Um, so I think some communities were just voting yes and no on everything and just trying to react somehow. Any other data that you're thinking you'd like to see that you don't know where to find? Yes. For, for the district schools, uh, if we have a district school, mm -hmm. uh, is that also on, on here? It used, I, I can't remember. We used to think it ended up getting that somewhere. Not from us. Not so much from us. So the, the Division of Local Services has guidance and oversight of municipal government. We have a small role in the oversight of regional and only that we, uh, for regional school districts, we certify their, their version of free, free cash, which is excess and deficiency funds. Um, so we have that data. Obviously, we have the cherry sheet data because I issue the cherry sheets. So that's pretty much what we have right now on regions. Um, I, it, I was just in a staff meeting and we were talking about some of the things we'd like to do more on our website. And I'm going to work with the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education to pull data from them to build into our website to create reports similar to what we're doing with municipal. So we hope in a year or so to be able to produce more data on the regional school districts. But at this point, we only produce what they're responsible for sending to us. So, you know, we don't, we don't get their whole Schedule 19, which is their financial document they got to send to DESE. Um, and we'll never be able to go to the level of, so you're in a town and you have five districts, but not regional districts. You have five school districts, like Boston has multiple school districts. We'll never be able to wean down to that level of detail. We'll always have it in the aggregate, but we are going to work with DESE to get more information on the regions. We also have some tax rate data on for the taxing districts. Um, it's probably not one in this town, in this room, but there are some districts in the Commonwealth that are part of a community, but and also assess their own taxes. You have it a lot down in the Cape. Um, the I think it's Templeton out this way has the Twin River or Otter River or something like that district so they're they actually issue a tax bill in addition to the town we have some of that data but we don't have a lot on districts it's just not something that we're involved in anything else more questions compliments <laughs> praise you like my flip-flops I must say I, I, I'm you, I, you like my flip-flops? <laughs> no, I, I, I played around with quite a bit. Uh -huh. There is a lot of information that you have here. There is it's a just, lot. Oh, it's, it's, it's overwhelming at times to think it end up going to see, because you also have a lot of documentation about uh, two and a half, et cetera, yes. levy limits. It's just, it's just a lot, a lot of information. You have to go in and, and just play around. You do. That is that that is truly the best way to to get in through our website is just go in there, not necessarily looking for something, just kind of looking around and see what you find. It's kind of like when you don't go to a penny candy anymore. You go to the four dollar candy bar aisle and you poke around and see what you 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 find in there, and you're like, oh, I didn't know they still made sky bars. Well, that's until Neko sells this week. Um, that's how you got to kind of approach it at this point if you're not familiar with it. Can you go back one? I, I, I missed on how you got the, to this particular one. I wish I had this information a while back. Sure. Um, so if you're here, this is the data bank, municipal data bank and data okay. analytics area okay, yeah. of the DLS website. No. We have a section here called local options relating to property taxation. Okay. And then it kind of tells you what, what you might see in there. That's one I hadn't got to. Thank you. You go in there and you'll, you'll see lots of different things in there. Yeah, yes. Anything else? I think you can turn the lights on. Yeah.